All I need is you, baby, baby. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and I look very tan, and that is because I got a spray tan yesterday, and they gave me four different options for colors, and they're like, which one do you want? Do you want like a two or a three? And I was like, I'll do a two. And then I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I have not gotten a spray tan in like a year. Like, let's just go for the three and see what happens. And I think I got a little too tan. It'll fade in the next couple of days, so I, sh I think next time I'm gonna get a two. But besides the point, today I have some really amazing, super fun and easy DIY projects for you guys. These are honestly great great like decor or personal DIY items, but they're also literally geared perfectly for Valentine's Day. So if you need to make anything for a loved one, a friend, your children, your parents, your teachers, your friend group, whoever it might be, these are such great, super affordable, easy DIY projects. And I wanted to make them, of course, very, very affordable. That way anyone can create them. And they're also great to create like in mass form. So if you wanted to make a lot at once, you can give them out to like all of your friends or all your boyfriends if you have multiple because people do these days. Or all your husbands, all your wives, whatever it might be. I'm just kidding. Hopefully that's not a thing. Um, but besides the point, today's projects are super easy, very cute and fun. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. And also, thank you guys so, so much for all of the love and support on my last video. That Ikea, like, storage hutch that I created. You guys were obsessed with it. I have never seen such like engagement on a video before and I just want to thank you all. So if you have not seen that video, check it out. I'll put it in a card up there for you guys. And let's all send positivity in the comments below because we all have 14 days to find a valentine. If none of us have a valentine, we still have 14 days guys. So I've never had one in my life. You never know what can happen in 14 days though. So yeah, let's get into today's projects. Alrighty guys, so jumping into our first project here, I wanted to do something that really displayed Polaroids nicely because I feel like Polaroids and Valentine's Day are just perfect together. So I'm creating a little Polaroid booklet display. And so I picked up these little wood pieces at Joanne's Fabrics, measured them out, and I'm going to be cutting them down to make the front and back covers of our books. It looks like I'm struggling with this saw, but I swear to you, it was not that challenging at all. And these wood pieces, the little cover pieces that I'm cutting are cut to three inches by four and one quarter inch. And I also used a little bit of sandpaper just to make sure the edges were all smooth and just ready to be covered or not be covered but be the front and back cover of our booklet so once those are done I measured out the size and I just wanted to cut out four inch strips of cardstock so I got I grabbed some craft cardstock at Joanne's Fabrics which is like just a kind of recycled looking cardstock and I cut it down to four inch by 12 inch strips and once those were all cut down, I then went and I placed it on the top and I decided where I wanted to score. So I used a pair of tweezers literally just to create a score line with my ruler and I scored it at every two and three quarter inch. So every two and three quarter inch, I drew a line and I scored it. That way you're able to easily fold it and then you're going to sandwich two pieces together. So there's like a little additional flap that was left at the end, glue them together. I'm using Fabri-Tac adhesive and then you're gonna glue it to the front and back covers just to create an accordion. I feel like this is kind of more of a self-explanatory if you see what I'm doing you're gonna understand it process um, but I'll make sure to put all the measurements on the screen for you so it's very understandable uh, so this is what you're gonna end up with and I have this scrap piece of leather that I've had in my collection for so long I've never even used it so I cut out a small little half inch strip of that and I'm using one of these little posts they're like screw posts and I'm just punching a hole through screwing the screw post on and you can find these in the leather section at Joanne's Fabrics and then I'm going to be punching a hole and we're just going to be creating a closure for this book so when you're able to kind of link it around you're able to clasp it on the front which is really nice and then I just wanted to glue this down to the back cover that way it stays stuck on there so I used my Fabri-Tac adhesive again and glued it down and here you go. So you're able to just simply fasten that shut. And then on the inside, you're able to display your Polaroids and you can actually put them towards the top if you wanted to. I put mine in the middle, but if you put them more towards the top, you can put like a date underneath or like a little memo or blurb, whatever you wanted to add. And I really think anyone would love to receive this because it's kind of like a classy take on Polaroids.
This next project is one that is kind of quirky and fun, but super cute and great for really anybody. Girlfriend, boyfriend, you can even make this for your kids if you wanted to, whatever you wanted to do. So I actually have some shrinky dink film and I'm going to link the exact one I purchased below. It is a white one and I put it over the top of my phone screen and drew out a heart. You can kind of use your phone screen as a light box, which is just kind of like a little tip. And I filled it in with a Sharpie. I filled in this heart completely with just a red Sharpie. And by the way, the heart that I used was just the emoji heart and I just found it on Google. And I also decided that I was going to do a pink one. I actually ended up not even using the pink one, but I thought I would share it anyways as an additional idea. So I filled that in with a pink Sharpie as well. And keep in mind that when you use shrinking ink film, the size of the piece you're doing is going to shrink down to a third of what it is. So I wanted to make my heart very large. I honestly used my entire phone screen. So on the back side of my heart, I actually did this little like broken-esque look. That way you can create two necklaces and you can give one to a loved one and you can have the other one for yourself. So I punched a hole in the top of each and then I put them in the oven, let them bake. It literally takes between two and three minutes, but as you could see, they shrink in size tremendously, but they end up turning out into these like very thick plastic charms. And then next what I did was use some of this liquid gold paint because I wanted to make these almost look like enamel charms. So I went around the edge of this with the gold paint because the edge was originally white. So I went around with the gold because we're gonna be using some gold hardware. And once I was done, I also painted the back with the gold as well. I also ended up painting that pink heart gold just because I wasn't really into the pink color, but this is what it ended up looking like. And then next what I did was I actually put some of this Sculpey gloss glaze on the top. And this is gonna make it almost like a puffy layer of just like glossy glass. It looks really pretty when it's completely dried down. And the last step is just to create the necklaces. So I picked up some basic gold jewelry supplies at Joann's Fabrics, super affordable. I think they always have sales on these as well. And I basically cut down 18 inch pieces of chain, opened up a jump ring, looped a clasp on the end of the chain. And then I also added a ring on the opposite side. That way the little clasp had an area to clasp to. So this was our finished off necklace. And to finish off this necklace, you just need to open up a jump ring, slip your new little charm on there and then put it on the necklace. And that finishes off your little cute enamel charm necklace. I love the way this turned out and I think it's just a great, simple and affordable gift for anybody. This project here, if you make this for someone, they are going to love you forever. And this was actually inspired by Jen Woodhouse. She did a very similar set I saw on Pinterest and then I read her blog post about it and I was obsessed with it, but I wanted to recreate it in tutorial form to share with you guys. So definitely check out her post in the and I'll link it below for you as well. So what I started off by doing was using some Sculpey clay and I'm going to link the exact one I got from Amazon below because it's just so nice and easy to work with. And for these coasters, you're gonna wanna roll out some very organic looking shapes. So kind of just knead it into a random shape and then just start rolling it out. But the thing is, is you're gonna have to kind of trial and error how much clay you need per coaster because you're gonna want them to be semi-thick. I made mine about a quarter inch thick each because you are gonna wanna have a nice thickness to your coaster where you're able to kind of add a gilded edge to it in the end. So I ended up making four total coasters, put them on a baking sheet and you're gonna bake them according to the package instructions. So once the coasters are fully dry, you can select what Whatever paint colors you want. Now keep in mind you are gonna be using a ton of paint. I ended up like squirting almost this much paint per coaster and I also used just a very fluffy kind of watercolor brush and the reason you're using a lot of paint is because you're gonna want your paint to kind of blend together. So you're gonna want to have a lot that way it starts to blend with each other and when you think about agate coasters, I kind of think about a very milky consistency. I actually have a set myself from Anthropology that was literally like $200 that I got for Christmas a long time ago. But I, when I look at it, the actual rock inside is kind of milky and crystallized. So I wanted to create a very similar aesthetic. So you're gonna create rings of color. And then once you have created those rings of color, add a little bit of water to it and kind of just start blending those colors. Because once it starts to create that very milky appearance, that's when it looks the most like agate. Now, it is kind of hard to achieve that rock look with just acrylic paint, but I think that it ended up turning out really great in the end, and you can really layer up the paints as well. Just keep in mind that the more paint you do add, the longer you're gonna wanna allow it to dry for. 
And also keep in mind that you could do layers as well. Like you might want to do a first layer, let it dry, do a second layer, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I just did it very freehand and organic. That's why I'm sharing my entire process here with you guys. And then I also realized I wanted to add this little bit of gold in there. And this really just made the coaster come to life. I feel like it almost made it look like there was like some mineralized, crystallized gold on the inside of the coaster. And it just made it look so, so pretty. So I highly suggest adding a little bit of gold or silver or bronze, whatever it might be to your rings. Uh, but I'll let you guys just kind of watch what I'm doing. As you can see, I added a little bit more darkness on the end here because you're never gonna want your coasters to look too symmetrical. It's always great to have kind of like an organic look to them. And this last one here honestly turned out to be one of the best ones, I think. I think I got better as time went on. So if you wanna practice on paper first, feel free to do so. Then let that paint dry overnight. And then what you're gonna do that really just finishes off these coasters is use your gilded paint, which I'll link this one below as well. It's from CraftSmart. I get it at Michael's and you can actually go ahead and just paint the edges of your coaster, which is why we want it to have kind of that thick quarter inch clay look to it. And lastly, you're going to add some of that Sculpey gloss glaze as well. I added way too much for this first one. I really thought it was going to be super thick and kind of very spreadable, but I ended up just pulling it off of that coaster and using it on all four coasters. So just give it a nice coat of this glaze because that's also going to make it waterproof and great for your beverages and drinks. And that finishes off this coaster set. How amazing did these look? Our last project here is a great little kind of customizable packaging idea for a bottle of wine because I feel like a bottle of wine is a foolproof Valentine's Day gift idea. If you don't know what to get someone, get them a bottle of wine. Now this linen piece of fabric was cut out to 26 by six and a half inches and then folded in half. So it ended up being 13 by six and a half inches. And I went in with some embroidery floss and just literally roughly sewed up the side of it. And I thought this added a very, very cute element. I was originally gonna flip it inside out, but I loved the exposed stitching. So once you're done, you can kind of slip your bottle inside and then cut off any excess you need. But you guys at 26, by six and a half inch mark that I told you was the finished off result. So I definitely suggest cutting your linen out to that size and then folding it. But next what I did was I just added a couple of embroidered hearts. Now you guys have seen me embroider on my channel a trillion times, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth about this, but I added on three little red embroidered hearts just to kind of add a cutesy Valentine's element to this. You can leave it just the plain wine bag if you wanted to, or even stamp on some hearts if you wanted to, whatever you wanna do. But look how great this looks in the end. So you can slip your wine bottle in, and I used a tiny piece of leftover paper from that Polaroid project I did earlier, and I wrote to Bay on it because this is for Bay. And then I uh, pulled off a little bit of like some twine, and all you have to do to finish this off is just wrap your little tag on the top, tie a bow, and that finishes off your little wine wrapper. How freaking adorable is this and it's customizable too so it's perfect Alrighty, so those are my projects today. I hope that you guys enjoyed these Valentine's decor DIY inspired gift ideas. These are such great just like gift ideas, of course, but also if you wanted to make those coasters for yourself, feel free to. If you wanted to make yourself your own love necklace, feel free to make yourself whatever you please. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It means the most to me. I hope everyone has an amazing and loving Valentine's Day. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new videos every single week here on room decor, DIY, home decor, room makeovers, transformations, all of the above, just tons of fun stuff. So I'd love to see you back on the channel and I will catch you all in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and bye guys.